uh, maybe to some short questions we can get started. Let me just introduce Sean. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Sean. Uh, she will uh, become uh, an assistant professor in Chinese University of Hong Kong, uh, Shenzhen campus. He was a postdoc fellow in the Department of Statistics at Harvard University. And then uh, he worked with uh, uh, Professor Susan Murphy in Mobile Health. Uh, he uh, is working on developing a holistic strategy that manage multiple intervention component in Mobile Health to enable patients to initiate and sustain health lifestyle choices. Uh, uh, Sean obtained he, her PhD degree from Georgia Tech and uh, also the bachelor degree from University of Science and Technology in China. Uh, during his PhD, uh, his work, uh, her work has been a finalist for um, multiple sessions from INFORM's uh, uh, conference. Um, Shang is going to talk about today uh, a framework for modeling, learning, and statistical inference for point process data. And uh, with that, uh, Sean, it's yours. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I feel very happy today to meet you virtually and get a chance to share some of my research topics and ideas with you. I would say that uh, there will be a lot of fun if we can see each other in person. But due to the COVID, I can only join you virtually. So today, I will be very happy to share some of my research on modeling learning and, uh, and the statistical inference of point processes. So the modeling and the learning of point processes are driven by many real world applications. I would say that the point process model provides a rather elegant tool to model and learn knowledge from sequences of event data. So let's start with some concrete examples of event data in modern systems. So modern systems in areas such as healthcare, smart cities, and social media continually produce large amounts of event data that are recorded irregularly over the time and the location space. These events often exhibit complex spatial and temporal patterns and are rich in other features, such as the markers or the text descriptions of the event. For example, in healthcare systems, each patient's visit to hospitals the lab measurements, the drug usage are typically event data. The occurrence time of these events are asynchronous and are irregular, maybe due to some scheduling issues, missed, appointment, missed appointments, and the changes in disease stages. The inter-event times can also convey rich information regarding the underlying dynamics, uh, such as a disease progression. Underlying the dynamics of these events in healthcare is of scientific value, which can be used to forecast the incidence of new symptoms or predict the, the disease progression so that some treatments can be delivered in time. In smart cities or smart transportation, for another example, it is desirable to provide a solution to traffic uh, management. For big companies like Uber, it would, be, it would be very helpful to understand the occurrence patterns of the rider's request. Each rider's request is an event. Understanding the spatial and temporal distributions of these events is of practical interest. It will help to better design the driving uh, routes for drivers and to better make the supply meet the rider's demand. In social media, each piece of the posted information, such as tweets or retweets, are all event data. We are curious about such questions like, do some events trigger other events? And if so, how will the triggering pattern look like over the network? Understanding the user's behaviors and, behaviors and preference in social media is very interesting and is of great business value. For all these mentioned event data, Point process provides an elegant tool to model these events in continuous time fashion without the need to, or without need to do the time discretization. The model is, is good at capturing the complex uh, spatial temporal patterns of the events and can easily accommodate the features as markers. The learned point process model can be used to not only predict the event type, but also predict the occurrence time of the events. 
So here is the scope of my research. Broadly speaking, I work on sequential data analysis and decision-making tools to tackle the emerging challenges in analyzing event data. I'm especially interested in proposing new tools based on point processes. For example, I have been working on new point process models to accommodate various properties of, of the event data and are in different application scenarios, such as enable the sequential model to deal with partial and hidden observations and a model sequence of the events by considering the networks and the involving interaction dynamics and propose a flexible neural-based point process model to deal with the big data challenge and uh, propose a um, a, la a logic guided the point process model to deal with the sparse event uh, data and to tackle the sparse data cha challenge. I have also been working on reliable and efficient learning algorithm for these new point process models. Based on the learned point process models, I'm also interested in applications such as detection, recommendation, and smart interventions. The proposed methods will have a wide applications ranging from healthcare, smart cities to social media. So let's start with some background of, of temporal point process. The temporal point process model is, is essentially a counting process and it is characterized by the intensity function which models the current rate of the event in average sense uh, within a short time interval or uh, around time t. The intensity function can also condition on history, which captures how pre previous events will influence the current rate of new event. For the inter-event times, as I mentioned earlier, they also convey important information of the dynamics. And the point process model treats these inter-event times as random variables. And the distribution of the inter-event time also depends on history. The intensity function is also called hazard function which is the ratio of the conditional density function of the inter-event time to a survival term, which is the probability that the event will happen after time t. From this ratio, we can write out the likelihood of the event data in terms, in terms of the intensity function. The likelihood function will be shown on the next, on the next page. So for the temporal point process, by modeling the intensity function of different functional forms, of the time and the history. It can capture various temporal patterns of events. For example, for the most simple and well-known Poisson process, where the intensity function is a constant, which is independent of the time and the history. This constant intensity function will lead to a temporal pattern where the event occurrence time are distributed, are di distributed uniformly along the time horizon. The inter-event times will follow an exponential distribution. All events are independent with each other. For well, inhomogeneous Poisson process, uh, which, is a more, which is more expressive, the intensity, intensity function is a deterministic function of the time. This model can uh, capture uh, how the occurrence rate will evolve over the time. The inhomogeneous Poisson process is widely used in the queuing system. For example, it can be used to model the arrival rate of the customer in a of the customers in, in a grocery uh, in a grocery store, which usually has a pattern that depends on the time of the day or the day of the week. For Hox process, <clears throat> which is also called self-setting point process, the intensity function is a uh, is a function of the time and the history. We can take a closer look. Uh, we can take a closer look at the intensity. It consists of a base term, which indicates the spontaneous occurrence rate of an event without the influence from the history, and a self-exciting term, which models the influence from historical events. The self-exciting term is a summation over all the historical events. It captures a pattern that previous events will boost the current rate of new events. Here, the exponential function it's a triggering function. Uh, uh, triggering function. So whenever there's event, the intensity jumps with a with a size alpha, alpha, and the influence from the from this event will decay exponentially as time passes. 
So uh, Hox precise is a very popular model to model the events um, such that they exhibit a clustering pattern over the time. It was initially introduced to model the occurrence of earthquakes. Recently, it has been widely used to model the social media data, such as information diffusion. The self-exciting pattern well mimics how the information will be generated and propagated over the social media network. So I will talk about I'll talk more about this later on. All these models listed here are parametric point process models. Recently, there are some new trends in modeling the intensity function. When popular direction is to marry point process with deep learning, an intensity function can be modeled, say, as a recurrent neural network. The neural-based neural point process is very expressive and can capture the sophisticated and nonlinear dependence patterns in events. This model can especially work well in the scenarios where we have sufficient event data, and we can just let the data speak for themselves. Another new model is to, matter, uh, to marry point process with the logic rules, where, where the design of the intensive function is informed by some logic rules. Then the generative process of the events will follow the rules in some sense. This model is especially helpful in the small data regimes where we do not have sufficient data to fit a, fit a big model well. By incorporating the logic rules as prior knowledge, the point process model can work fairly, fairly well uh, when the data is sparse. We'll also go back to this model later on. Once we have a model for the intensity function, we can learn the model parameters by maximizing the likelihood, which is a function of the intensity function. So take a closer look at the intensity function. The evaluation requires to, re to compute an integration term, which is, a, which is an integral of the conditional intensity function over the time space. And there's a product of the intensity function uh, evaluated, evaluated at the event time. This integration term is usually difficult to evaluate, especially for sophisticated intensity functions. So I will go back to this part and talk about how to tackle the computational challenges for sophisticated models. So now we have got an idea of what is the point process and what is the core modeling aspect and what is the bottleneck in learning. Next, I will go to the main content of the talk. In the first part, I will show a piece of my work as how to use multi-dimensional self-exciting, uh, that is a, a, also called Hox process, uh, to model the information diffusion over the network and how to design a detection algorithm on top of the point process model to detect uh, uh, anomalies. As we, dis as we discussed in the background part, point process models such as Hox process um, can be used to model information diffusion over the network. Moreover, by proper, properly design the, designing the intensity function, the multi-dimensional Hox process can model event data occurring over the network topology. It can not only model the temporal dependency of the event data, but also the complex cross-dimensional dependency among the network uh, among the network ent entities. The goal here is to do the early detection of some major events, such as early detection of anomalies, epidemic outbreaks, or to discover some new trends, hot topics, or breaking news. This is an interesting yet challenging problem, since the event data over the network are voluminous, high frequency. For instance, every day on average, around 500 million tweets are tweeted on Twitter. The true signal related to the anomaly are hidden in the noisy network. So how could we detect the weak changes? Random or ad hoc aggregations may not pull data efficiently or lose the statistical power to detect the weak changes. We noticed that the occurrence of change points such as epidemic uh, outbreaks 
on the hot topics of our networks, usually exhibit a uh, certain clustering behaviors over dimensions and tend to synchronize in time. We can smartly aggregate relevant information over dimensions and time horizon to manifest the strengths of signals and, to, and detect the change quicker. And the point precise provides a backbone to do such information aggregation, since it can preserve the information in data as much as possible. So let's use the detection of epidemic uh, as a motivating example. For example, uh, we aim to detect the early um, outbreak, for example, the COVID-19 using the social media data. Then we can first focus on the set of hash hashtags such as flu, fatigue, headache that are relevant to this disease. Then whenever the keyword appears, we record it. The recorded data will be a list of ordered events. For each event, we record the occurrence time, the enti an entity ID, which will be the dimension index. And the content is also recorded as well, which is the marker of the event. We can organize these recorded events according to their entity ID. Then we will have a multi-dimensional event sequences. We will use uh, the multi-dimensional Hox process to model these events. So Hox process explicitly models the self-starting triggering patterns along each individual dimension and the mutual exciting triggering patterns across different dimensions. It reflects some real and common scenarios where if someone sees her friend posted some content related to the symptoms, and if she happens to have similar symptoms, she might, she might want to post this as well to share this with her friends. Here, the mutual exciting patterns are subject to the underlying network topology. Ma mathematically, mathematically, we formulate the problem like this. Suppose there are D users over the network, which means there are D number of nodes. Whenever the two users are friends with, with, with each other, there is an edge connecting these two nodes. We assume the network topology is known. Uh, all the triggering patterns and the dynamics of the events are encoded in an inference matrix denoted as A. A is a D by D matrix. Each element such as alpha ij is either zero or positive. If it is zero, it means there's no edge connecting node i and g. If it is possible, it means there is an edge and the magnitude of alpha ij indicates the influence strength uh, from node g to node i. This A matrix is unknown. It is coming from the parametric model of the multidimensional Hox process. You can see for this multidimensional Hox process, for each dimension, the occurrence rate of the event is computed by aggregating the influence from all its neighbors' historical events. By leveraging some statistical tools, we can formulate the detection problem as a sequential hypothesis testing problem. Under the null hypothesis, there's no change. So the network the events are generated by a multi-dimensional Hox process with an influence matrix A. Under the alternative, there's a potential change point called kappa. We assume that before the change point kappa, the network the events are still generated from, uh, by the multi-dimensional Hox process with an influence matrix A. But after the change point, the events are generated by another multi-dimensional multi Hox process with another influence matrix A star. We rigorously formulate the detection problem as a hypothesis testing problem. And, uh, and we will check online and in a continuous time fashion, whether we need to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis, which means there's a change. 
Our goal here is to detect such changes, such a change, such a change as quickly as possible after the occurrence. Here we choose to derive a uh, generalized likelihood ratio uh, test statistics to realize this, which usually has a nice optimal detection power property. So based on the Hox process model and the constructed hypothesis testing, the likelihood the ratio test statistic used in the detection is formulated by computing the ratio of the likelihood function under the alternative to the likelihood function under the now, and then we take, we take a log. Intuitively, if this log likelihood, log likelihood ratio test statistics is centered around the zero, then we, we, can, we can claim that there's no change. Otherwise, if this log likelihood ratio test statistics uh, deviates, deviates uh, significantly from zero, then we claim there's a high chance that there is a change point. In the online, st online setting, the detection procedure is a stopping rule. Since both the A star and the A and the potential change point are unknown to us, we need to do the detection along with the, with the learning. The detection procedure has two layers of maximization here. So the inference matrix A under the null hypothesis is estimated from the batch the reference data, which we believe there's no change. We online track the A star using, using the new common data. The change point is determined by scanning all the possible locations, and we just pick the most likely one. And we claim there's a change whenever the detection statistics ex exceed the pre-specified threshold. Note that by using the Hox process as an event model, the likelihood ratio test statistics achieves uh, achieve weak signal detection by aggregating local statistics over the time and the network. From a practical perspective, we usually introduce a sliding window search scheme here in the detection, which means we only need to search for the potential change point within the sliding window to make the algorithm can work, work at scale. When we evaluated, the, we evaluated the effectiveness of our detection algorithm on real Twitter data, where we focus one uh, uh, focus, focus on uh, some celebrities and randomly choose, chose 50 followers uh, of the celebrities to form, uh, form a starship network. For the celebrity and the followers, we collect all their tweets and retweets from the late January to early February in 2016. We implemented our algorithm on these real Twitter events and visualized the computed log likelihood ratio test statistics here. We found that when there is a surge in the statistics, we can find an explanatory major event in real life. For example, for the middle one, the peak in the statistics corresponds to a major event that Michelle Obama stole the show during the president's final State of the Union address by wearing a yellow dress. This yellow dress was sold out even before the president finished the speech. These empirical results demonstrated the potential of our proposed detection algorithm in the early detection. Another critical issue of the detection algorithm is to set the detection threshold so as to control the force alarm to a relatively small level. For the online detection algorithm, to control the force alarm, we should control the average run length of the statistics under the null hypothesis to be a relatively, relatively long number, say one day or one week. In general, this threshold can be determined by Monte Carlo simulations, but it will be very time consuming to do this, especially for this networked event data. 
In this paper, we, we had a theoretical approximation result and we proposed uh, an analytical approximation to the threshold, which can be computed, com uh, computed without the need to go to the time-consuming Monte Carlo simulation. To derive the theoretical results, we needed to dig into the dynamic structures of the multidimensional Hox process to compute some terms used in the analytical computation. The accuracy of this theoretical approximation were evaluated using the synthetic data by simulation. Till now, we have dis uh, I have discussed an example as how to use the parametric multidimensional Hox process to model event data in social media and how to construct a detection algorithm on top of the point process model. Besides the detection algorithm, I'm also interested in and did some research related to how to perform smart interventions based on the point process model. For example, how to design some advertisement strategy for users over the network to guide their behaviors. So next, next let's look at a learning problem of the point process. As I mentioned earlier, present there are some new trends in modeling the intensive function at deep neural network. Uh, we can harvest the fruit from the deep neural network and as the, as the expressiveness to the point process model. However, for these sophisticated event models, it is challenging to uncover model parameters reliably and at scale due to the complexity of the model and the volume of the data. In the following, I will, fo I will focus on challenges arising from the model learning aspect where we developed efficient, stable, and tractable learning algorithms for these models. Cities or nature always produce huge amount of event data that exhibit complex temporal and spatial uh, patterns. For example, for the outbreak of the COVID-19, the, co the new COVID cases exhibit evident clustering patterns over the time and space. Spatial temporal point process provides an elegant tool to model these dynamics of these events in a continuous time and location space. For spatial temporal point process, the occurrence intensive function is a function of the time, location, and also condition on the historical events. Usually, we want the intensive function to be flexible enough. For example, we can parameterize it trust the intensive function as a neural network to capture the complex spatial temporal pattern. By doing so, we relieve the model needs specification issues, but we will increase the computational challenge here. When we learn the model parameters while maximizing the likelihood function, as I mentioned earlier, the evaluation of the likelihood involves an integration term. For spatial temporal point process, it requires, requires a double integral over the time and the space. Usually, there will be no closed form for this integral. And it's usually very time consuming to numerically, uh, to numerically approximate integration over three dimensions. To tackle such computational challenges, we propose a new learning framework for the point process. Instead of maximizing the likelihood function, we propose a reinforcement learning type of learning algorithm to learn the dynamics of the point process. The idea, the idea looks like this. So given thousands uh, of millions of the trajectories of the observed spatial temporal events, we aim to learn a policy that can sequentially generate pseudo-event data as its actions to mimic the spatial temporal patterns of the real observed event data. To drive the policy to gener generate events like the real data, we further introduce a discrepancy metric called the D to quantify the discrepancy a difference of the generated sequence of the pseudo events and the observed um, uh, true sequences of events. So 
suppose we can get a get a such a discrepancy metric D, which is relatively easy to evaluate based on the two uh, batches of data. We can learn a policy by minimizing the metric D. And by doing, doing, doing so, we want to drive the policy to mimic the generative, generative behaviors of the true data. In this way, we can bypass the harder to evaluate likelihood function. We can also alleviate the model misspecific model misspecification issues by adopting a very flexible policy model. Here, here are more details of the policy model. The function class of the policy should be flexible and expressive enough to capture the potential complex point process patterns of the observed data. Well, we can adopt the recurrent neural network um, or RSTM, RSTM or some advanced attention model to parameterize the policy. For example, uh, we can treat the policy high theta as the conditional density function uh, of the next event. So the next event, including the time and the location, can be produced by this, uh, can be produced or uh, actually sampled from this policy as an action. Um, so uh, our other, or, or, or instead of treating the policy as a conditional density, the actions of the actions of all the next events can be directly produced by nonlinear transformations from the hidden states of the RNN. So events are in this way generated in a sequential fashion. The generated events will be fed back to the RNN model to influence and update the current hidden state. In some sense, this generative mechanism mimics the event generating mechanism of some point process, such as Hawke's process, where the intensity function itself is stochastic and depends on history. And the intensity function will control the current rate of the next event. As for the derivations of the discrepancy metric, which is in fact derived from the imitation learning framework. For imitation learning framework, the goal is to learn a policy uh, called pi theta to mimic, uh, to mimic the experts' behaviors. For the experts, we only observe that they are traces. So this imitation learning fits well to our goal. Our goal is to learn policy that can generate a spatial temporal events that can mimic uh, the patterns of the observed sequences. Here we treat the, uh, the observed sequences are generated from some experts. Um, however, the original imitation learning framework is usually very time consuming. Since it requires first to learn an optimal reward function from data. And this step is called inverse reinforcement learning. The reward learning is formulated as a minimax problem. This formulation indicates that a proper reward function should give the expert policy higher reward than any other learner policy in the policy space. And the learner can approach the expert, be, uh, expert performance by maximizing the reward. Solving the optimal reward function is very time consuming in that it requires to solve the inner loop RL problem repeatedly. We relieve this computational challenge by choosing the reward function from a special function class. It is called a unit volume, uh, unit volume reproducing kernel Huber space. By leveraging the reproducing property, uh, we can obtain an analytical and a non-parametric expression 
for the optimal reward function by solving this inverse reinforcement learning problem. Uh, I will skip the details here. An immediate benefit of this is that we can show that the optimal policy can be directly learned by maximizing a uh, biomaximizing problem instead of the original minimax problem. The learned non-parametric reward function directly quantifies the discrepancy um, between the x per uh, between the x per policy and the learner policy. And that is the, the uh, that is the discrepancy between the uh, general pseudo events and the observed true events. And this uh, this optimal uh, reward function can be estimated well by nine samples, and it can be estimated using some mean embeddings of the observed events and the generated events. As a recap, here uh, for this this piece of work, we start with a, an imitation learning framework, and by choosing the reward function from the unibot from the uni, uh, from the unibot in the reproducing kernel Hilbert space, we convert the original minimax problem to a minimization problem. Then we can just uh, learn the optimal policy by minimizing some cumul cumulative cost. So the learned policy will generate, will generate a row of samples that mimic the observed events. And we also empirically evaluated the uh, gener gen superior generative performance of our learned policy. So ideally, if the generator the policy uh, can generate the events with similar patterns to the observed events, which means the generator has captured the complex patterns in the real data. And we can, the, and the learned policy or the learned generators can have wide applications in real, uh, in practice. For example, we can um, treat the policy as some generators um, to generate, uh, generate events with similar patterns of the true data. And on top of that, we can evaluate some, uh, some policies, some intervention policies. For example, for the COVID-19 cases, uh, our learned policy can uh, capture the real observed events uh, patterns pretty well. Then we can use the learned policy to evaluate, evaluate some, uh, some intervention policies such as some social, dis uh, social distancing policies how to evaluate the proper lockdown time. And the learned policy that generator can also be used to forecast the new events. So as a recap, in this, in this section, we discussed a, a reliable and efficient learning algorithm for some specific, uh, for some sophisticated point process models. Next, I will briefly talk about our recent developed temporal logic point process model. So this new model tries to marry, marry point process with the logic rules, where the design of the intensive function is informed by some logic rules. This model is especially helpful in the small data regimes where we do not have sufficient data to fit the big data, uh, big model well. By incorporating the logic rules as prior knowledge, the point process model can work fairly well when the data is sparse. The proposed model can have a wide range of applications in areas such as healthcare and finance, uh, other areas where there's a rich domain knowledge that can be utilized to build the model. For example, in healthcare, the occurrence of the disease or the symptoms on the patients are event data. The, treatment, the treatments to patients are also event data. We aim to build a model to understand the treatment effects and meanwhile to predict the occurrence time of the next event. Say, when will the patient's blood pressure return to normal and why? To realize this, we need, we need to build a predictive, predictive and the interpretable model. We consider a scenario 
where we have human experts uh, that can help us pre-specify some logic rules. According to the pathogenesis of the disease, which can be treated as a domain knowledge, that will, that will be true in most cases. And we aim to build a probabilistic model by incorporating the domain knowledge. Ideally, we hope by leveraging the prior knowledge, such predictive model can be data efficient and can be able to general, generalize well from only a small handful of samples. We aim to propose model that will work well in small data regime. Our work addresses a problem as how to leverage prior knowledge in terms of a set of temporal logic rules in modeling the generative process of the event data. We aim to propose a unified framework to combine, combine temporal logic rules with the point process models and answer questions such as when and the why the event will happen. In our model, the logic rules are prior knowledge and are provided by human experts. The logic rules can be of this disjunctive normal form or called all of all ends. In our, in our paper, we describe how to use the set of logic rules as soft constraints to inform the probabilistic models of the sequence of intensity. Uh, actually, to inform the intensity design of the event model. In short, the logic rules define a template that can selectively gather information from history as evidence to reason about when and why the events, event will happen. Our framework is a recipe for translating temporal logic rules provided by human experts to the functional form of the, intensive, of the event intensive function. The logic rules will determine the structures of the intensive function. In this way, we encode the logic rules as prior knowledge in the intensive function. So given a set of temporal logic rules, we are interested in modeling the transition intensive function of the head predicates. The body predicates of the logic rules act as templates and can get where to search the relative information from history as evidence to infer the state transitions of the head predicates. Um, so for example, suppose the head predicate is a, is a normal blood pressure and the body predicates are treatments and the patient's other symptoms defined by the set of rules. Since the head predicate can take either one uh, means a true, true or zero means false at any time, it can be modeled as a continuous time to state stochastic process, which can be ca characterized by two intensive functions. We define a lambda star as a conditional intensive function for the head predicate to transit from state zero to state one, and define mu star as a conditional intensive function for the head predicate to transit from state one to state zero. The observations of the head predicate will be a sequence of events where the transition times are recorded. As for how to use the logic rules to get the construction of the intensive function at a specific time t, if the head predicate is current in state zero, then we model the, then we model the uh, transition intensive function from state zero to, to one. Intuitively, given the evidence collected from the historical hierarchical data, if the head predicate transits from zero to one, we will satisfy the logic rule. Then there will have some positive effect to drive the predicate for such a transit. On the other hand, if the predicate transits from zero to one will violate the logic rule, then there should have some negative effect to prevent such a transition. Inspired by this, we can build the uh, intensity function in terms of the pre-mentioned formula effect. And the intensity function is defined like this. Given a logic rule, 
we search we search for all the historical event, uh, information of the body predicates. The summation in this term takes into account of all historic uh, hi, all historicals uh, how historical space combinations um, of the body predicates. We also assign a formula weight to each rule that will be learned from the data and acts as a confidence level of the logic rule. Given a collection, collection of uh, rules, we assume that different rules contributes, uh, contribute additively to the intensity function within or with an importance weight. And we arrive at uh, a final expression of the intensity function. We also introduce um, base term BT here to indicate some unknown effect that are not defined by the logic rules. All these unknown parameters of the model will be learned by maximizing the likelihood function. And the likelihood function can be written in terms of, the, of this conditional intensity function. When empirically evaluated the performance of our proposed model in both synthetic and real data, in the synthetic data experiments, we show that our proposed temporal logic per, per, uh, process can cover several well-known point processes, such as the Hox process and the self-correcting point process, only using one simple temporal logic rule. In this way, we build the connection of the proposed logical guided point process model to many well-known point processes. For example, for the Hox process, uh, the previous events will boost the current rate of new events. This will, will correspond to a rule such as if A happens, then A will happen again, which can be expressed as a simple first order temporal logic rule. So for the self-correcting point process, previous events will inhibit the current rate of new events. This will correspond to a rule like if A happens, then A will not happen again. This which can also be expressed as a first order temporal logic rule. To construct the intensity function, we just need to pre-specify a list of simple temporal logic rules and then use the predefined, a pre-mentioned uh, pre uh, framework to construct the functional form of intensity function. So this, exam uh, this example demonstrates the flexibility of our model. We also have a healthcare application example where we consider a SU dataset for patients with sepsis. And for this example, we have doctors to provide the logic rules used in their treatment for, this, uh, for patients with sepsis. We demonstrate that by better leveraging the prior knowledge, our model achieves a better prediction performance in predicting both the survival rate and the time to survival compared to many classic baselines. For example, our model uh, leads to smaller uh, mean accuracy uh, MAEs than the neural-based point process model. And the results showcase the strengths of our model in reasoning about the current time uh, for events in a small data regime. This is because our model can better incorporate domain knowledge to form the conditional intensity, where in the small data regime, the RSTM based up can, uh, based on a uh, point process model are uh, data hungry in nature. We are also interested in understanding what types of, types of medical treatments contribute more to the outcome. And the importance width of each rule can also be learned. So uh, 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 an attractive uh, follow-up problem is how to automatically uncover these temporal logical rules from event data. Instead of pre-specifying the temporal logical rules, which might be too restricted in some application, um, we, we aim to learn these rules from the event data automatically. So this is still an ongoing work. We plan to use the temporal logic point process model as a backbone to build the likelihood of the data. And we can design some al search algorithm, for example, a branch press algorithm to jointly learn to jointly learn the set of uh, uh, logical rules uh, and uh, logical rule structures and their importance widths while maximizing the likelihood. The uncovered rules will shed light on why some events will happen at specific times. 
Moreover, our method has the potential to enable human experts and algorithms to exchange knowledge. The uncovered logic rules can modify or sub supplement experts' domain knowledge. And experts can also provide feedback to refine the learned rules to increase the safety of the interpretable models in many high stakes uh, uh, as tasks. So my future work will be a natural extension of my current research uh, with more emphasis on collaborative and interdisciplinary projects. I'm interested in using uh, machine learning statistics and optimization tools to solve problems arising from complex healthcare, social economic, uh, so, uh, and the financial systems. I believe the methodologies I develop will have a diverse range of positive impacts and, will, and can lead to a better society. The, fo uh, the following will be my in, in initial focus. So I'm interested in proposing better sequential models. I aim to continue to add transparency, transparency and interpretability, interpretability to sequential uh, models. For example, I'm interested in producing neural hybrid sequential models that can incorporate domain knowledge, such as logic rules, to optimize learning strategies or to uh, get a neural model design. Many existing neural-based sequential models are, uh, are difficult to interpret the prediction results. I want to create a white box sequential models that can work in both small and big data regime. In some cases, the interpretability is more critical than predictions. For example, in medicine, people are more interested in understanding which treatment contributed to the uh, cause of disease. Uh, than in merely predicting the pre, uh, patient's health status. I believe there are rich opportunities in starting interpretable sequential models in AI and make agents really intelligent in perceiving and processing sequences of various types. So I'm, I'm also interested in pro, uh, proposal more effective sequential decision makings uh, currently, I'm collaborating with Dr. Susan Murphy at Harvard University on reinforcement learning problem in mobile health. We will develop the first multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, algorithm to coherently personalize multiple, multiple mobile intervention components, enabling patients to initiate and sustain healthy lifestyle choices, such as increased physical activity, uh, help the participant to, um, to, uh, to um, to uh, stop the smoking. My research will focus to the effective decision making with the humans in the loop, tackling such changes as delayed or sparse user feedback, user's disengagement, and non stationarity of the environment. I aim to contrib uh, contribute to tackle these fundamental and long standing challenges in RL and create more effective sequential decision making tools. So my methods can also be applied to other interactive emotion learning applications, such as edu educating people to increase human potential. I'm also interested in uh, interpretable policies. That is the policies that uh, can understand not only which action to take, but why it is a good action. I want to use the symbolic planning as a descriptive and intuitive high-level technique to improve the data efficiency and the interpretable interpretability of the reinforcement learning. I aim to propose an elegant uh, framework that can incorporate domain knowledge to drive RL for meaningful exploration and can also learn effective policies from small data. Interpretable policies will add safety to policies and will have wide applications in healthcare education and other, uh, other areas such as autonomous driving, driving. Okay, that's all I have for today. Okay, Any great. Questions? Yeah, thank you very much for introducing this nice framework for modeling event data and all these uh, wonderful examples. I will start with some questions. Uh, other audience can either uh, type in your question in the Q&A this session or uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask the question directly. Okay, so 
my my first question is uh, so in your uh, uh, session about this uh, inverse reinforcement learning approach for learning the very flexible point process model, uh, the the formulation actually looks very similar to generative model, especially this uh, recent one generative at the Surrey network. Can you say a bit more about their similarity and uh, is it possible to bring in some of these uh, techniques from GAN to make your method better? Uh, right, so I think uh, it, it's possible to bring some more advanced techniques from GAN to, uh, to, the, to our setting to help us better, better uncover the dynamics of the point process. And recently, there is a piece of work that uses Varsistan, Varsistan, uh, Varsistan uh, distance gam to uncover the um, this, uh, uncover the dynamics of the point process. Um, but compared to that model, so our proposed uh, uh, discrepancy metric uh, motivated by imitation learning is more uh, efficient to evaluate. So it actually it, 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 it can uh, learn the model in a more efficient way. But uh, I believe many tech, uh, other techniques from the GAN model um, can be uh, used to, to this sequential setting on, to uncover the dynamics of the sequence. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, uh, in, because the many, uh, for, many, for the GAN's model, uh, the applications are main, uh, mainly limited to the image data. So, but here we have the sequential data. So we have we need to think about how to adapt the techniques to the sequential setting. So um, yes, so so that's 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 what I what what is my idea. Okay, great, thank you. So um, you have this uh, part about learning temporal logic rule. Can you say more about it? Uh, you have that one slide about learning temporal logic rule. How is mm -hmm. it connected to? these uh, temporal logic prime process you explained. Are you using mm -hmm. it uh, kind of a, a subroutine or something? Maybe uh, 30, yes. is it 36 or slice yeah, so, Yes, so because uh, our point tem uh, for our temporal point process model, we propose a framework as how to, um, how to build the likelihood function uh, um, uh, for for this for this uh, uh, ru uh, logical rule guided the uh, um, point process, and uh, I, we can use the uh, this likelihood function as the as a, a backbone of our learning algorithm. So by uh, using the um, so uh, on top, for example. Uh, use the, this the likelihood function as a, as an inner loop to evaluate the current uh, and current uh, logic rules, and uh, and uh, on top of uh, that, we can design some some search algorithms over the uh, logic uh, over the rule space. So, uh, some algorithm may, may be uh, some classic uh, branch and press algorithm, um, and. Uh, to search from search through the uh, logic space, and in this way, by maximizing the likelihood, we can we want to join to uh, like learn uncover the uh, logic rule tem uh, template, uh, yes, and as well as the importance importance ways of of each logic rule. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions from the audience? So I actually have uh, two other questions but I, I will give the opportunity to the audience to ask further questions before I proceed with my questions. Any question? So I maybe I will just continue with my question. So uh, you have uh, learned your, uh, uh, it's a temporal prime process model. That's mm -hmm. like a fit in the data. And actually, can you say something about uh, maybe some optimization on top of uh, this model? For instance, if I want to optimize the traffic uh, based on your model of the, you know, uh, the request and then the, the Uber car location, things like this, how would you 
make use of model to optimize the traffic. Or maybe your model is modeling the, you know, the logistic data, you know, the arrival of some uh, uh, products and then the demands of the product, things like this. How would you use your model to optimize the production of the products and, and maybe uh, storage of the product in some warehouses, things like this? Can you say mm -hmm. something about this aspects? Right. So actually, our generator model um, provides a simulator to the um, to the for, for example. You, you, as you mentioned, the uh, the trans the smart trans, trans smart transportation problem is uh, basically a um, demand and the supply problem. So we want to try to make the supply to better meet the demand, and the demand can be uh, so our our general model um, provides a simulator to the demand side. So. Uh, and uh, on top of that, we can, we can uh, given a policy, we can evaluate the effect effectiveness of policy using our uh, uncovered simulator or generator using the, uh, you know, because it, it creates a simulate, simulating environment to evaluate the, the policy. So using this simul simulate simulating environment, we can tune the policy, uh, the policy intervention policy. So to meet our uh, our specific goal for 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 the for the, for the decision making problem. So uh, and and by tuning the policy, um, so we can uncover we can find a proper way to design the intervention policy. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any other question from the audience? Okay, uh, if no more question, let's thank uh, Dr. Sean again. And then uh, uh, if you have uh, any other question about temporal prime process modeling or its uh, uh, application, uh, you can contact uh, Dr. Sean and then she will be happy to, uh, you know, uh, talk more with you on this. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's for the seminar today. Thank you. See you mm -hmm. then. Bye.